nearly bedtime for me, but I thought let's finish the day with a bedtime story. And today's story is called You Are Special. So get yourselves all nice and comfy and we'll start our story. Punchinello stepped out of his little house, looked at the bright orange sunrise and listened to the singing birds and smiled. What a great day, Eli, he shouted to his maker. Eli looked up and waved. His house sat on the highest hill, but not so high that he couldn't hear and see the wooden people he had made, the Wemmicks. Consider it a gift, my friend, he replied, and entered his workshop. Punchinello noticed a bright red package in his mailbox. My, what is this? Someone brought me a present. He unwrapped it. A hammer. I love hammers. But who gave it to me? He looked up and down his street, but he saw no one. Not far away in another small house, Lucia, Punchinello's friend, was asking the same question. Who gave me such a gift? She wondered as she lifted the lid off the box she found outside her front door. A paintbrush and a palette of paint. I love to paint, but who knew? Splint and Woody lived down the road from Lucia. They found their gifts at the foot of their beds. Wow, thanks Woody, Splint explained. I didn't give you anything, Woody replied. Did you give this to me? He held up a green box with a yellow ribbon. No, but let's open our presents. Sewing stuff. Woody held up a needle and thread. I love to sew. Splint was just as excited. A guitar. I, I know how to play one of these. Who do you suppose brought us these gifts? And why, Woody added. Splint and Woody weren't the only curious Wemmicks. Hans the baker announced to his wife, Look, a new spoon. And Violet the florist found a, a beautiful vase on her doorstep. Even the mayor and his wife discovered gifts. Look, a bucket and brush, the mayor beamed. I love to clean things. Why, when I was a little Wemmick? Not me, his wife said. I don't like to clean anything. That gift must be for you. And this one must be for you, replied the mayor, as he reached further into the box. A book, a storybook for little Wemmicks. What fun. Who gave us these gifts? asked his wife. I don't know, replied the mayor, looking out his second floor window to the street below. But I see some little Wemmicks who could use a story. The mayor and his wife looked down to very tired Wemmick family. The mother and father were leaning against a wagon. Their three children, looking cold and sad, sat in the back. By the time the mayor and his wife reached the street, other Wemmicks were already with the family. Punch, Lucia, Splint and Woody, who brought their gifts to the village, hoping to find the giver. But when they saw the wagon, they dropped their presents in a pile and forgot about them. What happened? Lucia asked the family. Everything is gone, the father explained. Our wagon wheel broke when we crossed the bridge. When the wheel broke, the wagon tilted and our clothes fell into the river and washed away. The rain soaked our food. We are tired and hungry and dirty. Where are you going? We came from far away to see Eli, the mother answered, but I don't think we'll make it. So tired, so hungry. Her voice trailed off and her head hung low. For a few moments, no one spoke. No one knew what to say, but Punchinello had an idea. He turned to his friends and announced, Hey, we can help this family to see Eli. Yeah, they agreed, and every Wemmick ran to work on the wooden wheel. Splint and Woody tried to yank it off, but it wouldn't budge. Here, let me get it, demanded Hans the baker. But when he pulled, the wheel broke into pieces. Now see what you have done, said the mayor. Let me take over. And uh, But when he lifted the wheel... It fell apart. And that is the end, the, the, the middle of our story for tonight. And we're going to read the end tomorrow night. 
I hope you all sleep really well and have a really nice day tomorrow. Good night, everyone.